Welcome to Dent Reviews. Today I'm going to be doing a review of the JVC, actually the Drop Plus JVC, FDX-01. This earphone has an interesting backstory. Basically they had an, an FW-01 or something similar, uh, JVC made, and people over at Super Best Audio Friends, I think it was, teamed up and they were, they were basically testing material and put some cotton fiber in here from a Q-tip or something like that. And it improved the treble response by dampening it just the right amount to give it a really nice frequency response. In doing so, they made one of the most neutral single dynamic driver earphones really out there for, for the price especially. So Drop and JVC teamed up and what they did is they manufactured a set of filters that essentially give you that same response as the ones that the uh, community had developed with the cotton material or whatever it was and now they're just manufactured filters. So it's kind of a nice professional way to have that same sound and be more consistent about it. So they're a single dynamic driver and they are a 11 millimeter driver. It's a dual uh, carbon driver, I think is what they call it. It's got some fancy technology in there, different diamond light carbon coating and all this stuff. But basically it's a single dynamic driver, pretty large one. It's got 16 ohms of impedance and it has 103 uh, decibel sensitivity, and it has uh, 12, uh, sorry, 1.2 meter cable, 3.9 feet, so roughly four feet cable. It's not too heavy, it's about 20 grams. For its size, it's got some heft because it's metal, but it's not uncomfortable and it's not heavy by any means. I'd say it's just heavy for its size. It's comfortable in the ear. It's all metal, so it's a really nice construction. The ear pieces rotate which lets you put them in your ear at any angle, which is very nice if you want to wear them over ear and wrap the cable around your ear or hanging down cables. The ear tips are spiral dot JVC tips. They have a wide bore and it comes in five different tips, I believe, five different sets of tips. Four in here and one on the earphone. It's got the three filters, the white, green, and blue. The white is the stock, which is basically no filter, full treble. The blue and green vary depending on when you get your JVC, which version you have, but basically the blue in my set is the mid, which is half reduced treble, and the green is the fully reduced treble. And some sets have it the opposite way around. The filters are easy to put on and remove. They have an actual latch right here, which is kind of cool. You just pull that latch with your finger, and with your other finger you rotate the filter, and you can pop it out. You can see inside there. And then you can just put it right back. And when you put it back, you just kind of fill it to get it in place and then rotate it. It locks and you're good to go. You can see there's a base port there. And that's basically the physical design. The cable, it's a really nice cable. It's an MMCX cable. So it's easily removable. It's a nice cable because not only does it feel nice, but it has separate right and left components here. One has a blue dot that you can feel with your hand, so it's awesome if you're in the dark, you can see which side is which, not having to look at them. The cables feel really nice. In fact, it's probably one of my favorite cables of all earphones. I really like it a lot. It's got a really nice 3.5 connector with a small sleeve. Fits easily into any phone case, things like that. Really nice stress relief on that. It's got a nice, sort of a half flat feel to it. It's not a fully flat cable, well, maybe it is, but it has some thickness to it and it's mostly flat. And then at the Y split, it turns into two small radial cables here. You can see they're enclosed in like a sheath, but they're braided inside. It looks nice. It's kind of a cool gray translucency thing. The centerpiece is nice and small. And then the cord lock is awesome because it kind of blends right in with that centerpiece and it's nice and small and metal. I like that a lot. Great cable. Highly recommend the cable. In fact, if you had an earphone that used the JVC um, cable, that didn't make any sense. If you have an earphone and you, you wanted to use the JVC cable, it would probably be awesome. But I don't think you can buy it separately, so you're out of luck. You have to just have the earphone, which is 200 something dollars. So really, unfortunately, you have to buy the earphone to get the cable. So that's all the physical hardware and kind of the specifications of it. Uh, how to remove the filters, case, okay, I think I've gone over everything. So what I want to talk about now, as always, the most important thing to me, how do they sound? Now, the JVC is a very, very, very competent dynamic driver. What I mean by that is the technical performance of this thing is really outstanding. They have a very 
low distortion, there's no background noise, they don't hiss on any device that I've used them on, they have very good dynamics, they have very good clean and competent sound. They're coherent because it's a single driver, there's a nice coherency from the bottom to the top, everything is smooth, it's very linear, I mean, really, it's just a phenomenal sound. The main flaw with the sound is going to be in the frequency response. And for that purpose, let me come over here and grab some paper. It's art time. Dun, 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 dun. So let me just show you a quick overview of what the sound is. The frequency response graph here, you got low, mids, and highs. The way I would describe the sound of these is slightly, maybe sub-bass oriented and then very, very linear in the mids and low mids. And then the treble kind of scoops up and at four kilohertz, there's a bit of a peak and then it kind of goes back down from the treble. Again, this is just a rough graph, but you get the idea. So from a perfect linear response, the major areas that it deviates in are that four kilohertz peak. That's the biggest downfall to the sound of this earphone. And then the upper treble has a few dips and bumps that are very minor um, with a caveat, but I'll get into that in a minute. And then the bass is actually very clean, very tight, very high quality bass with a little bit of a scoop shape to kind of emphasize maybe the sub bass. Don't think of it as like a moon drop dusk or anything like that. It's not shelf shelved on the sub bass. It's just, it's not like most earphones that have kind of a mid bass dominance. It doesn't have that. It's a very linear bass. that just kind of gradually curves up at the bottom. It's very nice. So again, the Achilles heel here is really that four kilohertz. That four kilohertz bump is just, it's not obnoxious when you listen to it. If you're not comparing it to other earphones, it's not, well, depending on who you ask, I guess, it's not immediately obvious. It doesn't jump out at you and hit you in the face. It's not irritating. It's not harsh but it is forward and it does detract from the overall sound in a few ways. The first way is that this lower treble here and the upper treble here are definitely masked by that. And because that peak is just at that wrong area for me, it's just not a pleasant, again, it's not a, a harsh or bad sound, but if you had boosted the two to three kilohertz, that would have given you a more of an etymotic like sound. If you had boosted a little higher than that, it might have given you a more Harman-like sound. But what this does is this just peaks at that 4 kilohertz alone and not around it. So it gives the impression that the sound is very brittle and maybe dry and hard in the lower treble. And then even though it's just the perception, it's not actually doing this, it makes it sound to me like, like the mids are scooped out and it gives it a hollow sound. And it's really disappointing because if you simply EQ that 4 kilohertz down a little bit, the entire spectrum just takes an overall sort of a warmer tone to it. And the mids sound more full and rich, and the details are smoother, and it's just a much better performer. And it's only because of that one area. So while it's not great, and it's not drastic, it does impede on the overall sound quality. I think that if you weren't comparing other earphones, and you haven't heard a really high quality single dynamic driver earphone, this is gonna be phenomenal even with that peak. And in fact, I think some people think it's the best dynamic driver earphone there is. And I could see why, because it, it has a very uh, high def sound to it. The treble is incredibly well extended. So you have a lot of nice crisp detail, a little bit of air. It's got nice body. It's got a deep sub bass that can hit when it's necessary and get out of the way when it's not. It's got a very clean and detailed sound. All that's true but it just has that slight forwardness in that region there that for me keeps it from being as good as something like the Moondrop Illumination. However, that's three or four times the price. So this is a much better value. I think that if you're not bothered by that, you might find this to be an amazing IEM. But some people, not me specifically, but some people are bothered by that frequency response area. I'm not bothered, but I would say that I don't like it. I think that if it were a little bit lower or higher, I would have enjoyed this earphone more, whereas that just changes the sound in a way that I don't like, even though I wouldn't call it objectionable or irritating. So how does it sound in terms of the imaging, the emotional experience, and things like that? So it's pretty wide. If this is the sound field around your head, 
My pen's going to start failing on me now. Come on, pen. I think it's pretty wide, maybe around that area. It's not the widest thing I've ever heard, but it's fairly wide in terms of depth from the, you know, the back of your head to the front of your head. It's pretty deep. It has a nice treble extension and fairly linear treble and mids. So you do get that impression of being able to hear into the sound. Like if you were in a hallway, you could hear all the way down the hallway. And it has that sort of a depth that's very good. I wouldn't say it's particularly hyped up or enhanced, but the sufficient treble extension does allow you to have a pretty good sense of that depth. And it's not at all you know, muffled or anything like that. It's, it's very nice, it's very clear and deep. The overall instrument separation, again, isn't the best I've ever heard, but for a dynamic driver, it's very good. The sound field sounds like it's in front of you. It wraps around you a decent amount. The instrument separ separation is very distinct. Things are very clear. It's easy to pick out guitars that are panned to one side while the drums are in the middle and the vocals are on top of that. And then maybe string pads are panned a little bit to the sides and then vocal harmonies are panned all over the place. You can hear all of those things pretty clearly. And while it's not as good as some earphones that I've heard, I would say it's definitely above average, especially for a dynamic driver. So all the technical specs, all the performance in that aspect, I think is very good, probably above average. Frequency response, for the most part, I would say is 90% there. It's very phenomenal in terms of its linear and smooth response, with just that slight knock at the 4 kilohertz, which for some people is actually a pretty big deal. But uh, if that doesn't bother you again, it's a phenomenal response otherwise. So when I listen to music, again, just to kind of give you an experience like of uh, what it sounds like emotionally and things like that. If I were to listen to a song, let's say I listen to a song with a, a guitar, and as that guitar is playing, acoustic guitar, solo, you know, just one instrument, I feel like it has a very good transient attack. The string pluck is clear and natural and it sounds like it's in a nice open space, and everything about that is very good, but the tone of the guitar sounds a little bit nasally, and that's that 4K bump there mostly. So beyond the nasally tone of the guitar, it has a full body, it's fairly rich, and it has a lot of realistic timbre and texture. There's a lot of texture detail in that guitar, the string noise, the finger noise, all of that stuff is, is present and it's very good. It just has a nasally tonality because of that frequency response. So you hear all that stuff with that caveat. If you were listening to something more electronic, uh, depending on your taste, you might think this sounds great. It's got a nice sub-bass presence. The kick drums and the sub-bass can hit nice. They're not bassy. It's not a bass head earphone. But for someone who likes a more linear and studio monitor type sound, is able to hit nice and deep sub bass and hit it clearly and tightly, which is very, very good. And the treble is a nice and clear and again smooth in its response. So, electronic and things like that on some earphones can come off kind of harsh because a lot of it is very bright with a lot of dynamic attacks and things like that. Or, on the other hand, ironically, some of it is very compressed and again bright in that regard. So, being smooth helps that to sound high def without being irritating or piercing. It's just that 4 kilohertz bump again, like always, it's going to make a kind of a cold, hard, nasally sound and make the mids below it a little bit more recessed sounding, even though they're not, just relatively speaking. So you might have a little bit of hollowness, which in some songs can almost give it an enhanced sense, sense of depth and ambience, but in other songs it's just noticeable as that change in tonality. So for strings and things like orchestras, they actually do a very good job. A lot of times you don't really notice that until something like a horn or a saxophone, you know, tuba, something like that comes in. I find it more noticeable there. They jump out at you more, and that brass sound is a little bit more in your face, and it sounds maybe a little bit unbalanced in the mix of the song because of that, and there's just a lot of that energy at 4 kilohertz in a horn section. That pen's still smudging. Um, so... For things like orchestras, if they're mostly string-based and things like that, it's going to sound really smooth, very clear, really nice body, and really it sounds phenomenal. But when you add the brass and the things like that, it could get a little bit in your face. So I think that depending on the person, that's just going to, based on how much you're irritated by that 4 kilohertz break. Now, here is where the problem is, and I've actually had 
three separate sets of these. And the main issue I have with this earphone, and this, the reason I'm not keeping it, is because if you look at the frequency response of the three pairs that I have, I have two problems. First of all, the channel balance between left and right is very drastic on most pairs that I have. And I say drastic, you know, it's not like 20 decibels, but it's noticeably not within what I would consider tolerable levels of balance. So that's the first knock. The second knock is that the treble response of all three has been fairly drastically different. If you actually go to my site, I have a new site up here. It's called dent.reviews. Just type that in your browser and hit that and you can go to my graph tool. And thanks to Mark over at Super Review for helping me get that set up. It's awesome. I'm measuring all my iPhone, my iPhones. Yeah, I'm measuring my iPhones. I'm measuring all my earphones and my IEMs over on that tool. So go check it out. And you can see I have multiple of the JVCs in there with the different filters and some different tips and things like that. And what you'll see, if you look at the frequency response of my first set, you would see the treble response looked a little bit dipped and then peaked and then dipped and then scooped down. And then one channel had a lot more bass, but with a fairly similar treble with a little bit different curve. All right, and then the next set had an even different bass, and then the treble was a little bit smoother and not as peaky. And then the next set had even different bass, and the one channel was different than the other. One had no mid bass boost, another had like, I don't know, three or four decibels more, but something like that. It was just, it's, the shape was like different. It didn't match. And then the treble also didn't match. There's just no consistency. On top of that, my three units measure differently than Critical's three units and Super Review's unit. Sorry, Critical's one unit. So what I'm saying is I have five samples here. My three, Super Review's, Critical's. You could argue that they're all within a certain acceptable level, but I think from the earphones that I've seen, specifically the imbalance between channels and the treble differences between sets, I don't think it's acceptable. And it's frustrating because this is the third and best set that I have. And as good as it is, and it is very good, I'd say it's close to being what it's probably supposed to sound like, Critical's set measures with better treble than mine. Mine still has a little bit of a dip in a certain area. And with proper EQing, I can tell that it needs a few decibels more. And Crin's measures with those extra decibels. So Crin got a superb pair of JVC. How common it is, I don't know. But having at least my three at a minimum with the possibility of using Crin's and Super Reviews, you got to say there's at least some variance there that seems to be apparent. Um, I don't want to say this is a horrible earphone with horrible quality control. I'm not, I don't have enough sample units to say that, unfortunately. But in my experience, these three sets I've had alone are by far more varied than other earphones that I've measured, such as the Etymotics or the Moondrops. The Moondrops measure phenomenally well. Um, again, there's not a lot of sample size, but Mark over at Superview and I compared our illuminations and they looked identical. So I think that that's probably the biggest downfall to this set is that you may not know what you're going to get in terms of treble response. And the first set I had, I couldn't understand what the heck people were talking about. Mark was saying his set had great treble and technical performance, and I thought mine was okay. I mean, they sounded good, but the treble and the clarity wasn't there. And I found out it's because I had a pretty large dip in the treble, and it was making the whole treble sound soft and overly smooth. And it didn't have the extension that his had. Once I heard the third set, I'm starting to say, oh, okay, I see what you're talking about. There's definitely more treble clarity, more treble presence, things starting to jump out and sound more lively. And I would literally have probably written this off faster if I hadn't tried a second and then third set. So I think if you were to get a good set with a good tolerable level of, in, of channel balance and treble response, this is an excellent, probably one of the best sounding dynamic drivers there is especially for the price. However, that 4 kilohertz is that one kind of frequency response problem that's in all the sets that I've seen measured and people complain about. And then there's the um, variation. So take it as it is. I'm just going to leave it there and say that it's a very good IEM. If you get a good copy, it's well-built, it's comfortable, it's enjoyable, it's highly competent, 
and it's a very good value. For the price, I think you're hard pressed to find dynamic drivers like this. There's a few others that are similar, but slightly different in the tuning, like the Moondrop Starfield and things like that. And each one is going to cater to each person based on their preferences. But this is definitely a great value for the price. You're going to get a very neutral studio-like sound with the caveats that I mentioned. So if that's your kind of sound, check it out. Um, if you have any comments or questions, leave them below. And as always, thank you guys for watching.